Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here in studio today talking sports with Val on a snowy Friday afternoon. And as we're taping, we've had a couple of changes in, in schedules for tonight, but not too bad yet so far. Uh, Argus and OD boys has been uh, postponed, and the uh, DeMott Christian Pioneer boys basketball game has been postponed. But and we have something to report. The Triton Culver girls boys doubleheader has been postponed. Oh, has it? I hadn't heard that one yet. That just came across about five minutes ago. From okay. So where we started taping this. So. Also, the Culver Wrestling Super Duels scheduled for Saturday has been canceled. Okay. So not only, not only was Culver obviously part of that, but Caston was also supposed to participate in that. So, But that's been canceled. Okay. So you didn't have some more up-to-date information than I have. So um, just keeping an eye on the weather here, and, and we'll let you know if there's any other updates. So far, the boys, Rochester Zebras, Lewis Cass game still on, as far as we know. As far as we know, yeah. yeah. So that'll be one that we'll be monitoring, especially that along with the Bethany Christian Cast and Girls game. Yeah. Uh, that's another one. The North Judson Winnemac boys game is something that we'll also be keeping an eye on. Yeah. I think the the Bethany Christian coming out of the Goshen area that that one might end up getting canceled. I would I would think because I know it's a little bit heavier up north as far as the the snow and everything. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Let's keep an eye on it for you. So if the uh, Rochester right. boys and uh, Lewis Cass uh, basketball game comes on after this show's over, then it's still on. Yeah. If not, then it got canceled. Right. And if you see my, if you see, you know, we always put my Twitter handle. Uh, on the screen as we talk during this show, and I'll, I usually tweet everything out. Uh, I don't keep anything to myself, so I'll tweet it out. And I'm also on Instagram and Threads at Val T Sports RTC. So probably I've been using that a little bit more frequently. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't. So we'll be. I think you'll be able to find out if one way or another on social media if if something gets canceled and or moved around. And of course that becomes really important on a Saturday because mm -hmm. it looks like it's this is going to continue into tomorrow. So if games get postponed tomorrow, we'll we'll have that for you as well. All right. All right, let's get into it. We have a busy busy show, a lot of stuff going on this week. We've got a bunch of highlights to show you here as well and Let's start off at Rochester, as we always do, and uh, let's start off with the wrestling. Uh, big weekend last weekend for there's no uh, place, Rochester. There's no other place to start except for wrestling, Yeah, uh, with the way this last week has gone. Uh, let's start off on Friday. The uh, Rochester uh, High School hosted two monstrous events. They hosted the girls semi-state on Friday, and the boys uh, won a team state duels on Saturday. The only school in the state to host both events and they were back to back Friday and Saturday and from everything I heard they did a tremendous job on both of those. Yeah, it was a great it was a great atmosphere for both events. It was a different atmosphere for both events just because the semi state you've got uh you know kids from a whole bunch of different schools here and did, there. Did I see over 50 schools represented on that? I think it was something like 57. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh so uh you had a whole bunch of different a whole bunch of different colors in the stands. Uh, this is with the way w girls wrestling is growing. This might be the last time you'd have it at a s gym the size of Rochester's. Mm -hmm. It might have to just move to a to a bigger gym, especially if you've got 16 wrestlers in each weight class. With, I mean, this didn't, but it's going to get there eventually. One would mm -hmm. have to think, and once it does, they'll have to move it to a bigger place, just like they do with the boys, where you know you have it at East Chicago and mm -hmm. which seats 8,000, and Newcastle, which seats. 8,500, what, 9,000, and the Fort Wayne Coliseum and the Ford Center in Evansville. Yeah. And you kind of wonder if it's gonna, if it's headed that direction for the girls with the increasing popularity. Yeah, and it sounds like next year it's uh, it might be an IHSA event. So, right. Yeah. And we're, we're still waiting on whether the IHSA decides to sanction it. This is the second year as a quote-unquote emerging sport. Yeah. So that would be, uh, be great. And, uh, you know, not only did Rochester host, but Rochester had several participating in the uh, semi-state right, as well. Right. They finished fourth as a team. They had eight wrestlers participate in the semi-state, and three of them made it to the state finals. Uh, that would include uh, McKenna McKee at 125 pounds. She finished fourth. Lane Pepler at 145 pounds. She finished second. And Grace Hiram's at 155 pounds. She finished third, so top four in each weight class advance. So they moved on, and 
it, you know, it's interesting because each each one of those three has kind of a different level of experience. McKenna is a first year as a freshman, had never wrestled before, mm-hmm. and made it to the state finals. Uh, and you know, she's she's somebody who, and I, I know uh, Chad Morgan. You and Chad Morgan talked about her. I mean, she is an incredibly athletic kid. Right. And Tristan Wilson, I asked Tristan Wilson about her, and he, he goes, "She's so athletic that she's never out of a match, but sometimes she." She's never totally dominating a match. Like she could be winning a match and then get pinned, uh, which actually happened in her third place match at mm. uh, semi state. But that's but again, she's going to get it in time, and it's, she's just so much fun to watch because mm. of that. Uh, you know, now Lane Pepler, her story is different because she's a sophomore. This is her second year as a wrestler. I asked Lane about it. She said, "I never even tried a sport until." My freshman year of high school, and I tried wrestling, and she is so dedicated mm-hmm. and so much in love with the sport. Uh, but it's now it's just a matter of gaining that experience because she ran into a really um, experienced wrestler from New Ca- from New uh, New Haven in the semi state championship match and wanted to finish second. Yeah, and then Grace Hiram, she's a senior and she's been wrestling the longest of anybody. She's kind of the uh, the you know kind of the the team leader, and you know Grace was frankly disappointed by her performance. I mean. She she was not. Ex- I mean, I said, "Aren't you excited about going to state?" And she's like, 50 50 mm-hmm. I mean, she she really demand she demands a lot out of herself, and so I mean, every and that, that's what was so fun ab- about covering these kids. They were very uh, enthusiastic about the sport, but also held themselves to very high standards, even though this is just starting out. Yeah, yeah, and you know, for Grace, you you wish that she had that year, you know, next year with the IHSA sanctioning and everything. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, great uh, great results there, and, and they don't have to go too far uh, to go to uh, to state. Not near as far as the boys will. Right. Uh, just uh, being held down the road in Kokomo. So. Right, and uh, it's going on a schedule, from what we know, despite okay. the weather. Is that uh, starting today or is that tomorrow? It's today. Today, okay. So, uh, yeah, McKenna McKee drew Kyla Johnson from Southport, who's ranked number two in the state. Uh, at 145, Lane Pepler drew Eden Knight from Columbus East. Lane's ranked number seven. Eden Knight's ranked number 10 yeah. in the state. And then you got number three, Haley Coons from North Montgomery on the other side of the bracket, potentially waiting for the winner. And at 155, Grace Hirams is ranked number six. Well, that's great, but she drew Maylee Skinner from Madison. And she's ranked number four. Mm-hmm. That's a tough draw in the first round, and the winner probably will face Jasmine Camacho from Greenfield Central, who's ranked number three. Yeah. Oh, so wow. that is a tough bracket for Grace. So, um, but, but if yeah, she can get through it, if we'll she look can out. get through, it. yeah, look out. Yeah. Grace was state runner-up last year. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, Again, uh, the 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 semi state was a great it was a great event last week. It was, um, and again, ra- again some of the other Rochester kids who didn't advance were kids like Ryland Strasser and Lexi Hawes, who are just starting it out, just starting out, and mm-hmm. they're going to get, they're going to get better. I mean, they were facing more experienced kids, but I mean, these are kids who have just tremendous enthusiasm for it. You, they can't wait for next year already. Uh, Lakota Clevenger uh, lost. Uh, uh, I want to Amber Blackburn lost. Uh, but it's it's a team that, uh, and of course Lily Gerald got hurt. Um, but yeah, it's it's a sport with just a great future here at Rochester. Chan Mor- what Chan Morgan told you was really interesting. They got four seventh grade girls mm-hmm. who are wrestling and who are really enthusiastic and talented. Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, the future looks pretty bright for the uh, the girls wrestling program. So, uh, good luck to all the girls wrestling today at state. Um, let's get uh, let's move on to Saturday with the boys one A team state duels. The uh, Rochester Zebra is finally able to get it done. They are one A team state champions for the first time ever. They did it, and uh, again another fantastic in atmosphere. And you know, sometimes you know, sometimes kids feed off the crowd, and I thought in a way the crowd fed off the kids, and this, mm. the kids were so into it. And I think the crowd really started getting into it, mm-hmm. and they were pumped up, and just seemed like everybody <clears throat> was like they they knew it, it was a very knowledgeable crowd who showed up. Obviously, now again, you get four mats, and you get um, people from all over. You know, you get 
you know, the North Miami crowds up here and the West Central crowds up here. And um, so they're rooting at different things. But the Rochester crowd was just really focused and the kids were really focused. And I think you saw in Paul Deming's photos about how interested the kids were. And I think <laughs> it just, I think the crowd kind of fed off the kids. I know that sounds weird because yeah. usually it's the other way around, but I, it was just a phenomenal atmosphere. It started with Rochester beating Prairie Heights 51 to 26, then they beat Cowan 57 to 21. And they capped off the day by beating number one Adam Central forty six to twenty four. Yeah, I heard there was a a blog writer over in the Adam Central area, the Monroe area over there, that uh, had kind of boasted at how good the upper three weight classes for Adam Central were. Yeah. And I don't think that sat too good with the Rochester wrestlers. I wrote about it in my story. Apparently, there was a podcast podcast where somebody said that Adam Central had the best one ninety two fifteen heavyweight <laughs> combo. In Class 1A. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not only did Clint Guard <laughs> hear that, he told his kids about it, and he challenged them to do something about it. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the, and, you know, you again, the match started at 165. And so Brad Beck gets a pin right away, and then Declan Guard wins his match right away. So they're up 9 to nothing, and it's like, here we go. 190, Trevor Curry against Colin Wien. Trevor Curry is an all-state tight end mm-hmm. on their football team. Right. Colin beat him 5-3. to three. Yeah. I mean, that I mean, and, the crowd was going. I mean, we knew Colin had been wrestling well, but this was a step above for Colin. Right. I mean, how much how much has Colin just improved every year? And I yeah. mean, that's just a, a completely new level for him. Right. Yeah. Next match, Keegan Bloom against Alex Deming. Keegan Bloom is an all-state linebacker on their football team. Mm-hmm. Alex beat him fifteen to six, hmm. and Keegan Bloom got a reversal. Keegan Bloom lifted Alex Deming in the air and dropped him hmm. from the back. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is he was a stud, mm-hmm. and Alex and Ad got Alex going. He got a reversal right back to go up four to two, and Alex dominated the match from there. But that was that. I mean, that was kind of shocking. That was like, whoa, yeah. this kid's good. Mm-hmm. But Alex pulled it out, and that was a great win. And then the next match. Zach Worm from Adam Central against Brady Beck at heavyweight. Zach Worm is every bit of 285. Mm-hmm. And he's, I looked at the football roster. He's listed at 6'3", 285. He looked even taller than that. He was a mountain of a man. He was the exact opposite of a worm. <laughs> <laughs> and Br- it was 0-0 after first. I mean, he, he could move, too. Mm-hmm. It was 0-0 after one period. And you're like, whoa, this is going to be close. And Brady dominated the second period. He got a takedown. And then he... He was able to turn him from the top. He had an escape, then he had a takedown to go 3-0. And then he gets a kind of that cross face where he, he, was, able to, and he was able to turn worm. The worm turned, literally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, he, and he pinned him. And, I mean, the place went wild. And all of a sudden it goes from, I mean, you're wondering, like, well, can Rochester win one of these? Can they win two of these? They got all three. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden they're up 22 to nothing. And then... Grant Holloway, and then it goes back to the top of the order, essentially, where Grant Holloway gets a pin at 106. It's 28 nothing, and it basically the ball game's over at that point. Yeah. And Kale Schatz would eventually get the clinching pin, and Kale was in. Kale was being cradled, got out of it, and he pinned his opponent. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just kind of a storybook ending to it the whole day. 46-24. Rochester with number three seed, and they, yet they won it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been done before, I know. Uh, and then, you know, obviously Tell City has kind of dominated this for the last right. few years. So uh, good to see the uh, Zebras get, they didn't have to directly wrestle Tell, them right, this Tell time. Tell City but. had won it three years in a row. Adam Central pinned Tell City in the last match to win 38-34 in their semifinal. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Rochester was wrestling Adam Central, and uh, they they were able to avoid Tell City. Yeah, and they came in, what, four Number four, Tell City? Yeah. 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 So, well, congratulations to the, uh, the champion Rochester Zebra wrestlers. And it wasn't over for Rochester wrestling uh, this last week. They had uh, senior night this week, and uh, it was Tippecanoe Valley. What a what a better night to have than uh, to have Valley on the mats with the uh, Rochester Zebras for senior night. And was uh, fortunate enough to be there on Wednesday night and uh, – Got a chance to do this one. Chad Morgan, uh, boy, talk about a wealth of wrestling knowledge. I yeah. was very impressed. I, I think, you know, we throw you and him together for some sectional coverage, and that's going to be, uh, you know, Emmy-worthy stuff right there because he is good. He knows mm-hmm. his stuff. Right. The match that um, uh, it started with, with uh, 
Brant Beck winning at 165. I know uh, he gave up four points, but those were all on escapes just to keep Adamson on his feet. You know, Brant had just an incredible day. He had, uh, had team state duels. He beat uh, uh, the kid from Cowan, who had, has been his rival. I, mean, I know Grant's number, Brant's number six, I think, uh, the Cowan kid bled out. Actually, that was that was the strange match of the day. He he bled out. He they stopped the match eight different times for a nosebleed. Hmm. Hmm. And that was Declan Guard winning over Colton Crab at one seventy five. The two fifteen match was the one we were watching. We were waiting for Dalton Albert and Alex Deming. Um, Alex had pinned Dalton at the McKee invite. Um, Dalton was a lot more competitive in this match, but Alex was kind of in control at the same time. Mm-hmm. Alex wins ten to four. But again, uh, yeah, and it's, it's really, I, you know, Dalton's going to have a run, make a run in the in the Peru sectional and Peru regional, and I think he's going to have a good shot to make it to semi state. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, that wing move by Brady Beck against Colton Sisk. Yeah, and right as the uh, first period was running out, he gets the uh, the fall there and. It's the win. I mean, Brady ranked number two in the state. And then uh, Lane Horn against Thad Shambaugh. Thad Shambaugh is a good kid. He's a good wrestler. And this one was over with in about 52 seconds, 54 seconds. Lane is one away from the single-season pin record, honed by Damon Hummel. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Only one guy... Lane is undefeated, and only one guy has made it all six minutes against Lane. That was a kid from Northfield. Really? So you'll see him again in conference. But, yeah, Lane has been incredibly dominant this year. And this is how the night ended with Ethan Amiskita on a senior on senior night. Uh, and I have to say, that's the first time I've ever seen a pin quite that way. Yeah. I mean. Able to bridge uh, Fincher and get a pin that way. You know, e- Ethan is... He went 0 2 at Team State Duels, but he wrestled two really tough kids, uh, one from Cowan and one from Adam Central. I don't think anybody held that 0 2 record against Ethan. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he darn near beat the Cowan kid, who's a Jaden Jett, who's a really good kid. Um, Clint Gar thought he had a pin. Um, they said he got out of it, but and uh, the Cowan kid wound up winning 8 to 6. That was, I mean, it was a heck of a match, but. Uh, again, uh, really, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what Ethan does even at, at conference because he's he's wrestled a lot of tough kids this year. Yeah, so they win that one, 63 to 12 over Valley, and and the next uh, the next thing is is conference, right? Right. So they get a whole week and a half to prepare for conference yeah. and rest up. I know. Uh, the other interesting thing I found out about Lane Horn is that he, and I think Chad Morgan mentioned this on your broadcast, he tore his meniscus last year, I think, at conference. Hmm. I mean, he wrestled, con- or, or, or or sometime before, he wrestled conference in the whole state tournament with the torn meniscus. I did not know that, but that certainly puts his performance into, into some perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he got upset by a really good kid from Avon at, at state, who's yeah. ranked number five in the state this year. I mean, I, I mean that, I mean, wow. I mean, if that's it's a hard sport to begin with, and you're you're wrestling with a torn meniscus, so. Uh, Lane has been incredibly dominant. I mean, he has just been. I mean, he. I mean, it's just when you combine the strength and the technique and the whole package. I mean, mm-hmm. he has been amazing this year, and I'll be curious to see how he does uh, once we get to the state tournament. Uh, I, I find it hard to believe he'll be a challenge until the semi-state. Yeah. So good luck and uh, good week there for the wrestlers, and let's move on to some swimming as the uh, Rochester Zebras hosting Valley. And we got some uh, some swimming action in the pool there at the middle school earlier this week. Right, uh, Valley wound up winning the girls meet one hundred four to sixty three, and Rochester won the boys meet eighty five to seventy six. Uh, one of the stars for Valley that's Kendall Craig. Uh, Kendall Craig and McKenna Lau each won two event, individual events each, and they each won four blue ribbons as uh, Valley swept the relays. Um, on the boys' side, obviously Rochester winning won the meet, 85-76, as we mentioned. But, again, Valley's got six kids on their whole team. 
Uh, and, and the Valley kids, really, some of their times were just outstanding. Marcus Smith uh, swam a 202 in the 200 IM. I think he won that by 27 seconds. And remember, he's, he swam a 201.6 and won the sectional last year in that event. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go, it looks like he's going to go under two minutes once we get to the postseason. He's going to, uh, no doubt, he's going to make it back to, to Indiana. I mean, it, it certainly seems like he's headed back to Indianapolis. Again, I don't want to guess who's, there's always some kid, and who knows who CMA has. Right. You certainly think that Marcus could be favored. Diving-wise, Peyton Brooks, what an impressive diver yeah, he is. Yeah. He had 197 points. I know his goal, he he wanted 200 points bad. He had mm. 197, but he's on track, and if he gets to 200, he's certainly, he's certainly he's, uh, going to be a, a threat to make it to diving regional. Um, but he, he gets so high off the board. Um, just a really impressive kid. Uh, is that Isaac Whetstone? I don't know if that was him. Isaac was dominant. He, interesting, he did the shortest event, the 50 free, and he did the longest event, the 500 free, and he mm -hmm. won both. 22.07 in the 50 free. The winning time at sectional last year was 21.6. Uh, again, after taper, you think he's going to get down close to that. If that's, if that's what Coach Whetstone, who's his, uh, Scott Whetstone's his dad, he's also the coach there. So let's go, kid. This is... Uh, this Here's is his, I, the I, 500, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he won this event. 502 was his winning time. Now, uh, he and Jake Seifer did not swim against each other. We assume they will swim against each other at sectional. Mm -hmm. uh, but 502, he won this race by over two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, 502.91. And, and talking with Coach Whetstone, Isaac, Isaac's goal was to get under five minutes. Again, times are usually a little bit slow this time of year. Again, they do heavy mileage during winter break, so they're usually pretty tired. And there's, uh, again, the taper for girls starts what about in a week, week and a half from now, and the boys' taper starts around February, February third, February fourth, somewhere like that. So they're only going to get faster from here on. So if you're swimming 502, now you're going to be swimming. Who knows how fast Isaac's going to get? And again, he's a senior who's been doing this event for four years. He knows exactly how to train for it the way he wants. So, again, uh, Isaac's just a fantastic swimmer. Marcus Smith is a fan. You know, how about Carson Parker? A 103 in the 100 breaststroke. It's been a long time, I would imagine, since anybody swam a 103 in the 100 breaststroke on that, at that Rochester pool. Uh, he swam 59.6 at last year's sectional. If you get under... If you get under a minute in the 100 breaststroke, you are an elite swimmer in the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. Carson Parker's headed that direction. Yeah. Now, good luck to uh, to all the uh, swimmers. Is uh, yeah their their conference meets coming up pretty quick too, right? Is that the, the Sat same day as uh, the the wrestling? It's the same day as yeah. the wrestling. Saturday, January 20th at McConaughey. It's all so McConaughey. Yeah. Y'all go across the hallway for yeah. that. So. Uh, yeah, uh, McConaughey obviously will be favored both girls and boys. I think mm -hmm. they won the girls uh, every year since 2016, and they won the boys every year since 2015, since yeah. they joined the conference. Yeah. All right, let's move on. The, the girls' basketball teams. Yeah. Also, we should, let's give a shout-out to the Rochester boys. They beat Eastern last night, 88-84. Okay. So yeah. that was last night. So they, they yeah. have had a meet since the Valley meet, and they yeah. won 88-84. Each team won six of the 12 events, but Rochester got a little... little a few more bonus points and one by four. Okay. Uh, girls lost to Eastern. Okay. Yep, and that was at Eastern last night? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, the girls' basketball team setting at 10-9. and nine. Unfortunately, the uh, conference record now setting at 5-1 and one with a loss on the road Saturday at Whitco. Uh, you were there, Val. Here, let's uh, cue up these highlights. Tell us uh, about this game here on Saturday. Well, um, Whitco went on a run early in the second quarter to grab a seven, I think they uh, to grab a seventeen ten lead. I think, uh, and that was one of the key turning points. And it just seemed like Rochester was climbing uphill the whole way. Uh, Whitco, you know, they have improved a lot on the defensive end since last year. There's a three by Riley Clevenger. Yeah, I remember last year it seemed like defense was kind of optional for them. Yeah, they have improved a lot, and they uh, there's there's nothing fancy to what they do defensively. They're pressuring full court. And I think the main, main reason why are the two Stonebreaker sisters, mm -hmm. uh, Reese and Jama. 
and Reese is a sophomore and Jama is a freshman and boy they are both lightning quick and they are both just they're just like pesky little ants just mm. going after the ball constantly again uh, Rochester was able to get the ball in the post you, see, you definitely see progress uh, for both Jaden Field and Audrey Bollinger but this was a lot of what happened and that was a bucket I think by that was Jama Stonebreaker at the end of the first quarter that got Whitco within Ten to eight, and then they scored the first nine points of the second quarter to go up seventeen to ten. Um, when you, you talk about a quick pair of guards for Whitco, they're going to have uh, the Zebras are going to have to face that same situation against uh, Lewis Cass coming up tomorrow because they have some speedy guards there as well. Yeah, well, Afton Griffin and Faith Helvey. Um, but again, Rochester kept chipping away, chipping away. Um, and they got it down to, there was a bucket by Aubrey Wilson just with what, what, 15 seconds to go, and they got it down to four at halftime at 24-20. But then Whitco gets the first four points of the second half, and again, it was just this uphill climb all all the way. Um, they were down by eight. And there was a pull-up by Wilson to get him within six. And you can tell around the third quarter, Whitco looked a little tired. Um, Bracia Harrison, who's one of their starters, didn't play. So Whitco only played six players, and mm. you you play that style with only six players, mm-hmm. and it's not it's not it's not crazy to think you are going to get tired. And then in the fourth quarter, Ella McCarter took over three straight possessions. That's a pull up. That makes it thirty six thirty one. Let me see a replay here. And then they're going to work it around. And Ella's going to get a three in the corner. She's open. And she hits. And all of a sudden it's a two-point game at 36-34. And then Ella on an inbounds play. A little baseline jump shot. Good. And the game is tied 36 all. So Rochester were down by eight. And they've tied it. But then Chloe Craig hit a three-pointer to make it 39-36. That That's, that right there from Riley, that was impressive. Yeah, she never would have even tried that last yeah, year. Yeah, a little floater, and then what a huge bucket! Braylon Hunter hadn't scored all game, then with fifty-seven point seven seconds to go in regulation, she hits. She's fouled, but she misses the free throw that would have tied the game. Um, then Whitco hit a free throw. Then Gwen Howard got the offensive rebound. She was fouled, and she had two free throws. So it was basically a three-point play, a three-point possession that made it forty-five forty-one. And now Rochester again. They they're just in scramble mode, and Whitco does a nice job of playing keep away. And Rochester finally fouls, but by this point, it's there was what 2.8 seconds to go in the game, and Whitco would hit one more free throw to win 46-41. So it was tied 36 all. Whitco outscores Rochester 10 to five to close it out. But kudos to Chloe Craig. I mean, she's their one, she's their senior, she's their leader, mm-hmm. and when they needed a bucket, when Rochester had the momentum, she had a big three out of the corner to put them up thirty nine, thirty six. Yeah, huge bucket, but turnovers. Rochester at twenty three, hmm. and free throw shooting. Rochester was three for nine, and yeah. Whitco was ten for sixteen. Ooh, three for nine, yeah. And Whitco was ten for sixteen. They had some big ones. Gwen Howard shot two free throws earlier in the game, and she didn't even come close to making either. But when she really needed to make them, she swished them both. Nothing yeah. than that. And I mean, that goes back to the old Bobby Knight philosophy there. If you make more free throws than your opponent takes, you're, you're going, going to be in to good win. shape. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Craig was yeah, Craig was great. Howard was great. And the uh, the Stonebreaker sisters were great. So, again, Whitco's not very deep, especially without Harrison. But, boy, Rochester let one slip away. And, I, you know, again, the, the Rochester girls were pretty devastated by that one. I mean, they, they really wanted that one badly. Yeah, well, they're going to have to recover quickly because obviously, um, you know, they did go down to Logan Sport on Wednesday and pick up a big win, fifty-two twenty-four. But if they want to stay in this uh, conference race, uh, it all comes down to the, to the game on uh, Saturday versus Lewis Cass, who's setting at five and zero in the conference. Right, Lewis Cass coming up a really nice win over North Miami, forty-six to thirty-one uh, on Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, again, Lewis Cass, again, we talked about Griffin and Helvey, but they've got Hedda Kasunin, who's a foreign exchange student. Mm-hmm. They've got Kinsey Menon, who's really going to uh, gonna really challenge Kinsey uh, has field, really field bowling her in the post. She has really stepped up this year for them. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Yeah. 
But we should mention Rochester, the the way they played in the second half against Logansport, that might be the best, like, from middle of the third quarter to middle of the fourth quarter, that might be the best eight minutes of basketball we've seen from the Lady Z's this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ball was hopping, moving side to side, making shots, playing really good defense. Um, just, I mean, they went on a 25-0 run. It was twenty went from 23-16 to 48-16. Yeah, put that one away. But uh, Clevenger had four threes. The three she had, she had three in a row that forced Logansport out of their zone. They went into a triangle in two, where they were guarding Riley and and um, Ella. And um, Rochester really reacted to that well. Jaden Field had eleven, and Audrey Bollinger had nine. So you yeah. get twenty points combined from your two posts. That's really, it's a sign that that's going to only lead to better opportunities for Riley and Ella. And right, mm. you know, Riley had fourteen, didn't play in the fourth quarter, just rested. Yeah. And Ella didn't score at all. Yeah, and they still won by uh, right. a big margin. So Mia Howda shell at two big threes, scored seven. Yeah. Raylan Hunter had seven, also had seven. So you get 14 bench points, too. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be a big one coming up at home tomorrow against the 15-2 and two Lewis Cass Kings. Right, and then you get a week off, and then Manchester comes to town. And they've been playing they might, really well. They might be the hottest team in the yeah. conference. Yeah. I mean, they are playing great basketball right yeah. now. They won at North Miami last week. They pounded Peru the other day. Um, they've got, Brook- we know about Brooklyn Buzzer, but they're getting production under the post as well. Yeah. Gracie Lauer is a very, she might be first team all-conference. Yeah. She is playing very well. Yeah, so I mean, still a long way to go for the Lady Zebras, but uh, it starts on Saturday with the uh, Lewis Cass Kings. Mm-hmm. So uh, Before that, we got uh, the boys headed to Lewis Cass. Uh, no games last week for the boys, so 4-5. and five. They are 2-0 and oh in the conference. Uh, big conference game coming up if we play uh, tonight against 3-7 and seven, Lewis Cass, but Cass 0 and 4 in the conference. Right, and they've, I mean, their schedule's been brutal. I mean, they had to play Whitco and Peru on back to back nights. Mm. <laughs> but they've all, I mean, back to back nights on the road for both. So mm-hmm. that was tough. But having said that, they've been struggling a little bit. I mean, they've been struggling to score a little bit. So again, how will they do against a Rochester team, first of all, that's out for revenge because Lewis Cass beat them in last year's sectional? Right. And then how will they do, uh, again, Lewis Cass's size gave Rochester a ton of problems. I mean, Tyson Good was just, for four years, he gave Rochester nightmares. Now he's graduated, and Luke Chambers has graduated, so how will Rochester go about defending them? But I, yeah. the Zebras will be ready to go for that one I, whenever it's played. Yeah, and I, I heard that Johnson is back. He had been uh, out for a while with well, an injury. That's what we had heard, that yeah. they'd been dealing with some injuries, too, yeah. on top of all that. Right. So that's tough because Coach Brands is a new coach, and then they graduate good in Chambers, and they graduate their point their point guard with those big threes for them mm-hmm. during their tournament run last year. So, yeah, I mean, they, they've, it's it's a lot. It's more of a guard-oriented team this year. So, yeah, uh, yeah, curious to see how that turns out uh, for the Zebras once they play them. But, obviously, if, if that's not played, then the next game is, at, is a home game against Caston on Tuesday. And, well, Caston, in this rivalry, Caston always seems to be able to play better at Rochester mm-hmm. than they do at home against Rochester. Yeah, well... We'll talk more about Caston here in a minute, but I mean they've been they've been a, a really good team at times, and they've been a team of like scratch, head scratchers at times. Yeah. So we'll, so and that'll be an interesting matchup to see how Rochester matches up, uh, how Rochester matches up defensively with Caston's guards. Mm-hmm. That if you like guard play, that'll be that's the game for you. Right, right. With Bowers and Prater going up against Stinson and Zyder. Yeah, yeah, and. I really, I really like Caleb Stinson. I mean, he is a tough nose player. Yeah. I mean, really, and and Zyder had, you know, we'll talk about that too. But Zyder had a uh, really big game against Culver. Right. So, but Drew Bowers is such. He, I mean, he's he's so good defensively, um, and kind of is kind of like a freelancing defender, not necessarily an in-your-face defender, but kind of somebody who will go weak side and intercept a pass. I was like, where did he come from? Mm-hmm. Like he's he's good at that. Yeah. And Owen. Owen is so – he's a good in-your-face defender. He's right. the in-your-face defender. Right, right. All right, well, uh, possibly uh, Rochester at Lewis Cass coming up next after we finish the show. We'll mm-hmm. uh, we'll see how the weather handles the rest of the day. But uh, right. let's take a break here so we can uh, come back. We'll talk some uh, cast and comets and uh, Argus Dragons in our next segment here on Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins – we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future.
Stop on by to Inyards Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyards will supply you with the most top-rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyards Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyards friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. Let's move up the road to Argus, and let's uh, start off with the girls. As the uh, Lady Dragons hosting Oregon Davis, it was senior night, and what a performance by Samantha Redinger last night, Val. She had a senior night for the ages against the Oregon Davis Bobcats. Yeah, I mean, you just got the sense early that something special was going to happen. I. And it happened. I mean, I, you know, those first two shots she made, that, that was one. It was, what, about 25 seconds into the game? And she had another one, so. And even, uh, you know, even when she misses a shot, she gets the steal and, yeah. and puts it in. I mean, it just, everything going the way of the Dragons. And Sam, you know, just drilling from three, ten three-pointers on the night. That's a new school record for a single game, beating her own record of nine. Yeah. That was a three but by Lydia Lee that put him up 23-13. Argus scored 33 points in the first quarter. Yeah, it wasn't all Yeah, it wasn't all just Samantha. I mean, Lee had a, had a big game. Yeah. Uh, Ellie Bullenbacher had a big game as well. Yeah, and Barkas hit a three in the first quarter as well. That's a three-pointer by... Redinger to put him up by 18, and they got it to 20 at 38, 18, and then they would get it to 23 at 41, 18, and another three by Redinger. Again, they run that flare screen play, and she just run. The, again, it was it, it, kind of a change in offensive philosophy because all the screens they do again, and we talked about this during the broadcast last night. She scores a ton of points without being ball dominant, mm -hmm. without playing like Whitney Jennings or Ashlyn Brook or. Again, it, so it does. It does. It does take a team effort, and Coach Jennings talked about it, and and Samantha talked about it when I interviewed her after the game. I mean, double screens, triple screens. I mean, these girls, you know, her teammates have to do a lot to get her open. But if they can get her open, those ten, those kinds of things tend to happen. She had four more threes in the fourth quarter, scored sixteen points in the fourth quarter. And this is how the game went in, a layup just before the final buzzer to give her 55. And the previous school record was 50 by Samantha earlier this year against uh, was Trinity Greenlawn. Yeah. Uh, but we found out in the post-game ceremony that when she scored 47, uh, or I think, was it 50? 47 was Trinity. The 50 was against South Bend Career Academy. Yeah. Excuse, yeah. Yeah. The the Trinity the forty seven at Trinity was not the record. Yeah, we thought right. it was. We thought it was, but it wasn't. Because mm -hmm. uh, Roberta, uh, was it uh, Bert uh, Robertson? Mm -hmm. Had uh, Thompson. 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 Yeah. Roberta Thompson. Roberta Thompson had mm -hmm. scored forty eight back in nineteen seventy nine. So, yeah. So it was very it was very interesting that we learned about that. So the fifty was the record, and then now the fifty five. So. Samantha has three of the top four scoring performances in school history. Yeah, a nice little history lesson uh, mm -hmm. from Coach Jennings at the end of that as well. I yeah. Mean, you know, going back there and then bringing yeah. in some old players and 
uh, you know, good presentation there at yeah, the end Jenny as well. Yeah, Jenny Emanaker was there. So, uh, yeah, uh, and it was interesting talking with Samantha about not playing soccer this year. What I didn't realize is that Alicia Sarver didn't play soccer either. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, th those two are, those two spent the, got, you know, spent a lot of time in the gym together during the fall. Mm -hmm. And I know we've talked about how much Alicia's improved, and I think yeah. a lot of that was because of hanging out with Samantha. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Samantha said that she and Alicia have been, Best friend since mm -hmm. uh, Alicia moved to Rod Argus when she was uh, seventh, grade. seventh grader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep, yep. And it, it's great to see Alicia develop as a player as well. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have didn't show last night because she fouled out, but yeah, she got into some foul trouble early. And but uh, yeah, I mean, a great kid too. You know, so yeah. you can't uh, can't discount Alicia and what she has contributed to this team. I mean, she has definitely uh, you know been a factor for for the Dragons. Yeah. And what I didn't realize also is that uh, Samantha's cousin is Claire Klinger from Washington Township. Yes. The same Washington Township that team beat that beat him. Argus in the mm -hmm. regional mm -hmm. uh, last year. Mm -hmm. uh, they are cousins. Yeah. And Claire's dad runs uh, a travel ball team. I don't know if it's an AAU team, but that was the first time that Samantha had ever played s summer basketball on a summer basketball travel team. Okay. Yeah, I remember talking to Jenny and mm -hmm. Ted, uh, her mm -hmm. parents, after uh, after that Washington Township game, and they were talking. And I think there was uh, one of the games in the sectional where they had a, a cousin they were playing against that she was playing against as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Washington Township, you know, having a good year again this year too. So, yeah, um, they're going to have to, uh, to face a really tough Tri Township team, who was in sectional fifty now. They're in sectional 49, so yeah. that'll, that'll be interesting. So, uh, yeah, it was definitely an interesting learning exp it's for Samantha to talk about that because, again, Samantha doesn't – she's a woman of few words. But <laughs> I got some words out of you her. Got, you got it. I was hoping to get her on the air to talk about – you know, we, 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 we were hoping to have an on-camera interview because mm -hmm. I wanted Samantha to talk about her tattoo on her right arm, mm -hmm. which is the birth flowers of her two siblings. Mm -hmm. And she lost a sister when she was young. Mm-hmm. And this is a, and so it's her birth flower and Teddy's, and her late sister. So mm -hmm. I, I was hoping her that she could explain it because she could explain it better than I can. But mm -hmm. I mean that that's I mean that that's sweet how Samantha thinks of keeps her family close to her. Yeah, yeah. I think she was only a year or two old when she passed yeah, away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's uh, you know great performance there and. So not over yet, even though it was senior night. They didn't move senior night up because of the weather. They weren't sure. Uh, they do have another home game possibly tomorrow against Pioneer. Uh, that was supposed to be senior night. Don't know if that game will be played, so they, they moved that up to last night. And it was good to see everybody there, good crowd there last night. Yeah, and, really yeah. good crowd, especially because it, it all came together so quickly. Right, right. Uh, so a, a home game possibly tomorrow for the Dragons versus Pioneer. If they if they don't get that played, uh, their next game will be at John Glenn on Tuesday in round one of the Bi County. So a challenging first round for the Lady Dragons. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, the what do they call it? The Airy. Yeah. John TCU. Glenn? They they changed their name. Yeah. So it's still TCU, but it's the new name for there. Yeah. It's always a tough place to play. I, I've always. Oh, you're uh, you're talking you're talking the gym. I yeah. thought you were talking the. Because that's close to what the uh, the name of TCU has changed to. Oh, okay. The the sponsor of the yeah. Bay County. John Glenn's like, Gym is a tough the place area, to play. The yeah. area, yeah, yeah. And uh, so again, and and they're a team that's probably not going to play fat, fast. Coach Reese is a first year coach, so I'll be curious to see how uh, Argus's style works against John Glenn. Mm -hmm. And then the winner of that game would play the winner of the uh, Oregon Davis Triton game. Yeah, uh, yeah, possibly. Uh, you know. If they both win or if they both lose, you could see Argus and OD playing again next week. Possible. We talked about that last night. I know Argus will love another shot at Triton as well. Right. Uh, that was, if you ask the Argus kids, the, that was the biggest egg they laid all year. Yeah. When yeah. they lost by 14 at Triton. Yeah. They love to get another sh at the at the trench. They love to get another shot at them. Yeah. Uh, at Laville in the Bi County. Yeah. I think Argus would have a good shot at getting that one. Mm -hmm. So they got to get past John Glenn first. So. Uh, on the boys' side, they're setting at four and five. They uh, lost on yeah. Friday at Bethany Christian, uh, forty to forty-four, uh, but got a big road win on Tuesday night down at North Miami, winning sixty to forty-four. What is in the water at Argus? Sean Richard with thirty-six points against North Miami the other night. Yeah, 
36, and he only had one three the entire game. Hmm. And he's a point guard. Yeah. You would think, oh, he's a point guard, and he scores 36 points. He'd... No, I mean, but that's Sean's game. I mean, at the same time, I'm not surprised. He's He is so strong that when he just gets a head full of steam and he wants to go to the basket, he is hard to stop. Mm-hmm. And that's the North Miami team whose guards are kind of tiny, mm-hmm. and I'm not I, I, I'm not surprised at the same time. And Luke Stoltz had it 16, so 52 of the 60 came from Richard and Stoltz, but that's kind of not that's surprising. Yeah, those are their big two. A nice bounce back after the loss to Bethany. Yeah. Uh, now the problem is is that um, they're going to have to get some help. Bethany is three and zero. Elkhart Christian is one and zero. Those are your two undefeated teams left. Bethany mm-hmm. travels to Elkhart Christian on Thursday night, February 1st. That's the Thursday of Girls Sectionals Week. So that will be a huge game. Uh, but Cassin is probably going to have to win out uh, yeah. in, the, in the league moving forward. Next year those games will be flip-flopped as far as conference goes. Bethany will be a non-conference game, and North Miami will be a conference game for the uh, Dragons. And yeah. The, uh, the OD game for tonight is postponed. Yes. Um, so... I don't know if that one will be made up or not. They just uh, they did not say a, a make-up date. And, uh, of course, uh, Argus boys will head to John Glenn on Tuesday as well for their first-round by-county matchup with the Falcons. Right. And, as a, you know, again, John Glenn, yes, they graduated to Bryce and Hannah, but, boy, they've got some good kids still left. Chase Miller, he's their quarterback on their football team. He's a very good basketball player. Joe Shrap-Louis, who's what, a D1 baseball mm-hmm. player, he's a very good basketball player. Uh, uh, the, the the shoe kid has really been coming on for them. So, again, uh, coach coach Hannah, he, his team will be ready to go, and they will you will not out physical them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will have to put you all have to play really sharp, and you have to again they they've got to get on the boards in that game. Stoltz has got to Stoltz has got to have a huge game on the boards in that game. Yep. All right, let's move on here to Caston, the boys basketball team for the Comets, setting at four and six, one and one in the conference. Boy, it was a dandy down at the uh, Comet Crater on Friday night as the Culver Cavaliers came to town to take on the cast and Comets. And right there, uh, you can see the two jumping for the ball. Lane Hook and Jack Rogers would end up being big for both of their teams yeah. in this game. Uh, yeah, David Height got off to a really hot start for Culver. He scored nine in the first quarter. But he did not score again. But this was the story of the night. Lane Hook able to finish around the basket. Mm-hmm. Six four freshman for yeah. the Comets. I mean, he's, right. he's, he's got listed some... at, He's listed at six two. Yeah. I got to admit that he's not six two. No, he's not. <laughs> I'm six two, and he's taller than I am. Right. He's. Yeah. I mean, I, I've interviewed Riley Shepard. He's six five. I would say Lane's about just short of that. Six, six four. I, I'd call him six four. I'd call him six four. Yeah. And uh, again, height was dominant early. Uh, but uh, oddly enough, Culver kind of lacked height uh, hmm. because they didn't have Ethan Binion, and without Ethan Binion and without Brady Kinderney, Culver could really only go six deep. Yeah. And again, because Culver plays their zone press, Coach Evans would ideally like to go eight deep. Yeah. Again, because of that style that he plays. But this was kind of a pretty frenetic uh, first quarter. Actually, it was um, again height. Again, Height got off to a good start, and then Rogers really got going later on. And um, again, the thing about Cast is when Hook is going and finishing in the paint, that's just going to open up three point opportunities for Talon Zider and Caleb Stinson. Right. And this was as well as I'd ever seen Caleb Stinson shoot the ball. And that was a three. That was kind of a three. Everybody was going shoot it. Yeah, to Talon Zider, and he does, and he hits a three at the end of the first quarter to give Caston an eighteen seventeen lead. And I'm not sure they. I believe they never trailed again. Tie here though. Yeah, the McEwen, McEwen brothers got uh, got warmed up a little bit there in the second quarter for Culver. Right, you know Jonas McEwen is bas- You know he's played point guard most of his life, but with Jack Rogers on this team, Jonas is really going to have to. Play at that two spot or even the three spot. Play in the wing. He's going to have to hit shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, it's nice to have his ball handling, but again, shot making will be key for both McHugh and Brothers. That's another, and that's Jonas hitting another one. I think Caleb hit two and Jonas hit one, maybe in that quarter for the Cavs. Yeah, yeah. This end of the first half, Corbin Smith was really good. These last four minutes of the first half, Corbin Smith was awesome. 
And then Guasp, the uh, exchange student, he uh, he hit several yeah. for the uh, yeah, Cavaliers, he's too. From my, he's from Mallorca. But then, boy, Culver doesn't get back on defense, and Coach Evans was furious with his team. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what happened to that. But Smith gets a wide-open layup at the buzzer, and Caston leads by eight. Again, Guasp again. Yeah. Guasp had nine. He had three threes. And this is McEwen hitting a three. His American, quote, sister, uh, Grace Sieber. He's, uh, Guasp is, uh, mm -hmm. host family is the Sieber, so. He's from Mallorca, which is where Rafael Nadal, the great tennis player, is from. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Stinson had 14 and, and Zyder had 14. But this guy was the show. That little hook shot in the lane by... Lane Hook. <laughs> you, you, if your name is Hook, you have to be able to hit that shot, yeah, right? <laughs> right. So, Col but again, Culver, you know, they try to press, and it's but if you can break it, and if you can get the ball to the high post, and the thing about Lane is that he's, I mean, he's a big guy, but he's got, he's so comfortable with the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. He's a good passer too. He's, yeah, you get it to him in the high post, and he can distribute. You know, weak side, get that uh, open player. And it would end seventy six sixty two. I don't know if we saw a lot of Jack Rogers highlights. He had twenty five. Mm -hmm. He is so strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, twenty five, and he scored twenty five without hitting a three. Yeah. And then, again, what is going on in Marshall County? Then, what does Jack Rogers do against Community Baptist on Tuesday night? He scores thirty nine. Wow. With 12, and with 12 rebounds. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit more here on Jack yeah, Rogers we'll when we get yeah. to Culver. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, a big win, obviously, for uh, Caston. Conference win as well. It moves their record to 1-1 one and one in the conference. But Saturday night they go on the road to Delphi, and, and they lose to the Oracles 51-62. That was another one of those, you know, that we talked about, kind of like that Frontier game. It's like kind of a little bit of a head-scratcher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Talon Zyder at 22, he was great, but uh, he was the only one in double figures. Mm -hmm. So they held, I think they held Stinson to nine. They held Hook to three. Yeah. So, yeah. You go from 24 on uh, Friday night to three on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So kudos to Coach Cowley's team I'm at, at Delphi. I think he maybe has a little more length than maybe. And, again, I, they're not probably not inclined to press as much. But, yeah, disappointing for Cass. And they've, and they've got to find ways to get stops mm -hmm. on the defensive end. I, there's no doubt that they can score. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Grant Yadon is, and he, you know, the thing about Grant Yadon is he can score down low as well. He gets a couple putbacks every game, and he, he can finish around the rim. Grant Yadon, and it kind of reminds me of what Sam Smith did for this team two years ago. I think we maybe talked about yeah. that. So, again, I, I don't doubt that Caston can score, but it's can they get stops? Yeah. Again, uh, everybody in Caston's sectional has a losing record, including Caston. Mm -hmm. In fact, Caston, they're four and six. That's the best record of any team in the sectional. So, right. And they host. And they host the sectional. Right. So yeah. there's, a, there's, there's a long time to go, a lot of a lot of chance for improvement here. Yeah, yeah. So they go, uh, or they're home, I guess, uh, tomorrow versus 2-9 and nine West Central and then hit the road on Tuesday. We talked about coming up here to Rochester. So Right, and that West Central game, I expect that to be another – up and, and down. down game, yeah. Yeah. Well, on the girls' side of things for the uh, cast and comments, uh, they won on Saturday against Laville, which put them at seven and zero and back to back undefeated conference champions. So, congratulations. Forty six to nineteen, and Isabel Scales outscored the entire Laville team. She had twenty. Yeah, but. And and I don't know how uh, you know how shook up everybody's going to get over this. Uh, Tri County comes to town last night. This obviously this was supposed to be a Saturday game, mm -hmm. and so it was supposed to be Bethany Christian Friday and then Tri County on Saturday. They moved the Tri County game to Thursday because of the weather. So now um, you know you're playing two days earlier. You've been preparing probably a lot for Bethany because mm -hmm. they're coming in, you know, with three losses and defending state runner-up in 1A. So you want to mm -hmm. make a good appearance against them. And uh, last night the uh, Lady Cavs from Tri-County at the uh, Comet Crater. And, boy, you know, the, the final stats for Tri-County, nobody in double figures, but just everybody had, you know, seven, eight, nine, you know, in that neighborhood. And, 
got a contribution from a lot of different players on this Tri-County team. and Boy, look how quickly the ball moves for Tri-County as well. Mm -hmm. And they had a three right off the bat, and that, that was kind of a, a, a microcosm of what would happen for the remaining 31 and a half minutes of this game. They were hitting from the outside, and Casta was not. But Tri-County's ball movement was good. I mean, they were really getting uh, open shots and t uh, pouring them in. Yeah, I just, just got a chance to watch Tri-County on Saturday at, uh, at Pioneer. And, you know, they've got a great group of juniors. Um, you know, they were the only team that uh, beat the Pioneer juniors both years in junior high. I mean, just mm -hmm. a really good group of juniors, Arvin and uh, Zarzi and – uh, they got a girl named Luck. They got a a, a guard. Um, I mean, just a lot of really good players, you know, uh, for this team. And they are the defending sectional champions. They are. And, uh, you know, they just came off of a big, big win against a really good Seeger team as well. I mean, they're, they're feeling their oats right now, this Tri-County team. And, again, they never dribbled the ball into – bad situations which is because you're if you do that against cast and you're just in trouble i mean even at that isabel scales had nine steals in this game mm -hmm. i mean if you dribble the ball into the corner along the sidelines you are just asking for a turnover cast able to get it to 28 19 at halftime yeah i made some i made a couple notes from the second half um Scales hit a two at the 526 mark here just coming up. So she hits this two. The The next bucket is going to be a Zimpleman bucket uh, with a minute 35 to go in the in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a it's almost four minutes there uh, between buckets for the cast and Comets. And uh, they, they did uh, another stretch in the fourth quarter of almost three minutes uh, without a bucket. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know... Not something that you see a lot from Caston, that's for sure. Right. Um, Simpleman had 19 and Scales had 14, so they had 33 of their 42 points from their, you know, their two senior leaders. But boy, neither of them shot a high percentage in this game either. It was a nine-point lead at halftime. It was a 12-point lead after three quarters, 39-27. And I mean, Tri County, they got out to that big early lead. Caston mm -hmm. um, never really got too much under double digits. Right. They were able to get it down to five, and then a big three. I think that was Lucky with a three that put them back up by eight. Mm hmm. And on a scramble play, Caston able to get a basket, get it down to six. Baylor. Sarah Baylor, I think, was the yeah. other one I was thinking about that uh, is a, a really good player for Tri County. But it went with Tri County winning by five at 47 42. So the number one team in the state in Class 1A lost last night at home. Mm -hmm. But kudos to Tri County. They were the better team. Tri County had seven threes and Cast only hit one. Yeah. Cast went one for 14 from three point range. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's better to lose to Tri County now than mm -hmm. to lose to Tri County in the 1st of February. Yeah. So hopefully the, the Comets can learn right. from this and. You know, make those adjustments when they get into that uh, that section over there at South Newton. Right now, Tri County went six for fifteen from the foul line, and they still won. Hmm. So, if you're Coach Tyler, you're probably saying, Whew, "Well, that's good, but we can't do that again." Or right. maybe she's thinking, "Well, that that's kind of what we have in our favor if we play them again because we won't shoot free throws that bad the next time we play them." So, right. So, uh, McCaston was eleven for eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight, um, so far, still on. They will be hosting Bethany Christian. Of course, uh, you know, fifteen and three coming in. They were uh, the defending state runner-up. They made it all the way down mm -hmm. to Indy last year, and so. ranked number seven in the state this year. Yeah. So another challenge. I mean, you look at the rest of the cast and girls' schedule. They got Bethany Christian tonight, Thursday next week. They have North Miami coming in. Uh, January twenty-third, they host Carroll. And January 25th, they finish off with a road trip to Bremen, yeah. who just beat Bethany Christian. Right. I mean, that that's a murderer's row of a final, you know, five games for Caston. Yeah, I, I've talked to some people <laughs> who've seen Bremen, and uh, Bre Bremen's, again, they got young but talented guards mm -hmm. who are kind of a, a little bit inconsistent. But when they're on, they're really good. Yeah. And obviously, they're playing a, a top-notch schedule, yeah. you know, in the NIC. In the NIC. Yeah. 
And of course, Carol means Ali Harness, who just scored her 2,000th career point the other yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. She is, I, gosh, you know, I, I talked about uh, on Facebook, you know, watching Sam since she was in fourth grade. I've seen Allie play since probably fourth or fifth grade over at the Legacy at uh, um, Lafayette. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, she was as good as she is now back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, she could hit shots from anywhere on the floor, and I, I don't know how she does it. I mean, she, it just doesn't seem like she misses. Mm-hmm. I mean, she could shoot from 25 feet and, and just drill it left and right yeah. as a fifth grader. Mm-hmm. And uh, it hasn't changed. She yeah. is, she's a special player. Western Michigan is getting a good one. Yeah, yeah. So... All right, anything else on the comments here? Uh, yeah, no, not really. I mean, just uh, ne- ne- they need a third score. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably the key. But, again, in a lot of ways you're playing with house money because you're, you know, you've won Cass County invite and Miami County invite and you won the conference already. Yeah. But, but you, at the same time. You also want to get some positive vibes going into the section. Right, right. It, it's, it's a unique position to be in. Yeah, yeah. Because so, you've accomplished so much already. Yeah. You know, sometimes but, having that loss does not hurt you. Sometimes right. it's actually a, oh, a wake-up call. Oh, not only does it not hurt you, I think you need a loss. Yeah. I'd go so far as to say that. I, yeah. I would not want to be undefeated again. I, I still remember the 2005 cast and boys team that went 20-0, and 0, and then they lost to Tri-County in the sectional. I mean, that was just, it was just this kind of this feeling of, of just how long can you keep this up, and this... You, if you feel invincible, that's a, not, not that's not a good thing. Yeah, I think that was what, what Purdue was thinking this week too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back and uh, we'll talk some uh, Culver and Pioneer. And when we get back here, talking sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val and uh, entering into our third segment here. Let's talk some Culver and Pioneer. Culver boys basketball, 6-4, and 1-2. and two. We talked about that loss on the road to Caston. Um, but, you know, they came back and got a big win on Tuesday versus Community Baptist, 78-56. Val, first question for you, where is Community Baptist? South Bend. South Bend School? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you didn't think I'd know that. No, <laughs> I figured you would. That's why I asked you. I didn't want to put you on the spot because I didn't think you'd know it. I just, I, I never heard of it. So yeah, they are non non IHSA school. Yeah, okay, you got that one. So big win there. You said Jack Rogers had a uh, pretty big game there for them. Thirty nine and twelve rebounds. And how about David Hyde? He had twenty two. Yeah, a career high for David as well. Yeah, 
Well, I, he, I, he's he's improved so much. Oh yeah, I mean, I I remember watching him, you know, mm-hmm. kind of get forced into action last mm-hmm. year at Rochester because of foul trouble, but he performed very well, and I think he, like you said, he's just improved every time he's been on the floor. Part of it, I think he spent a lot of time in the weight room. Yeah, I mean, you can tell he's gotten strong and he's gotten quicker too. Mm-hmm. He is he's got an explosive first step, and he's also spent a lot of time in the gym too because you can tell his ball handling's improved and his shooting's improved. Yeah, quite a bit as well. Yeah. And that's one thing too with Jack. You're never going to have to yeah. worry about him being strong with the ball. Yeah, I mean he is, he is strong. Oh yeah, and the thing he's and the thing is, for a, a guard who scores as much as he does, he's not a great shooter. Mm-hmm. In fact, doesn't really even attempt many threes. Mm-hmm. But he's just, you know, and, and he can finish around the rim. He's got yeah, and and Coach Evans is a great coach for him because he's going to call plays to get him in space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get him some sets and yeah. get him some open looks yeah. or get him some opportunities to drive. Yeah, you can tell Coach Evans loves having getting to coach him and mm-hmm. you know kind of as a you know kind of queen on the chessboard because you can move him all over the place. Right, right. But they also had Ethan Binion back against Community Baptist, so that was big. Mm-hmm. So that gives him seven. Right. And if he can get Kinderney back from his ankle injury, that'll give him and kind of an eight man rotation. So that will so they won't wear out as quickly. Right. That'll be huge. Right. Now, obviously, the Triton game has been postponed, so now they go to Bi County. Yeah. They're at LaVille on Tuesday night. Culver has had LaVille's number, beaten them the last two years in conference play. Mm-hmm. Now they get him in Bi County, but it's at LaVille. Well, this is a tough matchup. Um, I'm really curious because you – okay, it starts here. You've got to keep Michael Good off the boards. Mm-hmm. We talk a lot of – when you talk about LaVille, the first two players that come to mind are Zarnecki and Plummer. But mm-hmm. – I saw Michael Good play the other night. I mean, he's got tree trunks for legs. You have got to box him out, and he because he gets position. He's six four, but he can go. He's going to be a tough matchup. Yeah. So I mean, uh, he and he can post up in the lane too. If he can keep the ball out of his hands and box him out, that's like half the battle. To yeah. Me. I, and I know that Zarnecki and Plummer are great players. Yeah. But I think if you can, in a lot of ways, if you can neutralize Good, that's where it starts. Well, and, and hopefully, you know, you talked about Binion being back. Hopefully, you know, because that was the one thing that, that Hook was able to do against them. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, Binion being back will, you know, slow that down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, LaVille, <laughs> doesn't matter boys or girls, doesn't matter records, doesn't matter. Uh, it is just one of those places. You know, we talk about going on the road to play at mm-hmm. Manchester. We talk about Southwood. LaVille is one of those places. Yeah. It's just a tough place to play. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Michael Edison and, and Jack and, and the, the coaching staff, I mean, they do a great job of preparing those kids to right. to take away what the uh, the opponent's best player is. Right. The other thing that's – right. And then when you defend them, the other thing they do is almost nobody sets more screens than LaVille. Mm-hmm. You have got to run through a maze of screens. They they wear you out with how many screens they set. So, And, again, that's why keep getting kinder nays back because, I mean – because uh, you you got to make some subs because you, you get or, or you're going to get worn out running through all those screens. Mm-hmm. And I, I also like uh, Lavelle's got a nice freshman too in Lance Edison, mm-hmm. nice player. You can yeah, tell the, you can tell he's played a lot of basketball. You, you know that name, yeah. You can yeah. tell he's played a lot of basketball for oh, a freshman. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's he's just going to he's not he's kind of he's a little tight. He's going to get he's not so much tiny as much as he's just got to fill out yet. Yeah, but he'll get there and he'll he's going to be really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the girls' side of things, uh, rough week for uh, for them as they lose at home on senior night to Frontier, thirty four, thirty three, drop their record to four and twelve, one and four in the conference. Yeah. And uh, you know, obviously, you said the Triton game is postponed, so uh, their next game will be at Laville for Bi County as well. Right, which means they got Laville twice in about a two week span because they right that's going to be their last game of the year as right, well. Culver always plays Laville in the regular season finale. Um, Again, it's kind of a guard-oriented team with LaVille, but Culver is kind of a guard-oriented team. I, uh, again, LaVille, LaVille has a uh, girl named Edison. Right. Brooke. Uh, Brooke Edison. Very good player uh, for the girls as well. Right. Um, again, Culver, I, I, again, I think a lot of it's going to kind of, there are going to be a lot of three-point shots taken in this game. There's going to be a lot of long rebounds. And whoever makes those hustle plays to get the long rebounds, I think we'll have an advantage in this game. I don't expect it to be a high-scoring game. I, I, if both teams wind up in the 30s, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But again, who kind of makes those? Again, Culver's going to come out in a zone. Uh, that's what the Nice brothers have brought. I mean, uh, to to Culver. I mean, they were more of a man-to-man team under Coach Lowry. They were more of a zone team under Coach under the Nice brothers. So uh, we'll see if they can if Laville sh- tries to shoot over the top of that zone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah I mean, again, that's a, that's a tough loss. And frankly, I wasn't expecting them to lose to Frontier. So yeah. we'll see where their, their where their mindset is. You know, kudos to Frontier. Uh, they had one win coming into 2024, and, uh, you know, after the Pioneer loss, they've uh, they've won three in a row. Yeah. I mean, you know, got to give them a little bit of a tip of the cap. They've got two bigs in Mears and Meneer, and they've got a good guard in Haley J. So, yeah. I mean, it's uh, uh, they're a little bit thin after those three, but, yeah. 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 So, But uh, those three have been playing well. Yeah. Uh, Pioneer boys, uh, three and eight on the season. Um Friday they won versus Frontier, 57-44, and uh, went on the road Saturday and lost at Faith Christian, 40-66. to Tonight's game... 68. Okay, Yeah, 68-40, yeah. Okay. Uh, tonight's game with DeMott Christian has been pushed to Monday, so their next game, uh, scheduled game, is tomorrow versus Carroll. So, you know, that's a 7-3 and three Carroll team, obviously, right. you know a lot that, about. That'll be in Royal Center, though. Yeah. Um, it's ne- Yes, Carroll's good again, but they're not as good as they were the past couple years. Right. Carroll's got a point guard in Chris Huerta. He scored over he scored his 1,000th point earlier this year. He's a uh, four-year starter for them. He is le- he's really quick, and he's really good with the ball in his hands. I mean, he's, he's not very big at all. He's maybe 5'10". Mm-hmm. Boy, he is quick. Um, Drew McKegg has been playing well. Uh, you can count on Drew. He's, even in the Faith Christian game, they scored 40 as a team. He had 27. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, who's going to be the second score, who's going to be the third score. Noah right. Miller's, again, Noah, boy, his, he's got a beautiful three-point shot. I mean, and, and he gets it off quick, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you cannot help off Noah. And, and so that helps Drew out because you can put, if you put, put it like an overload with Drew and Noah on the same side, that's tough to defend because mm-hmm. if you if you help off Noah, Drew's just going to kick it out and you can, they're going to get an open three. And if you stay on him, well, then Drew's just going to drive to the basket. Right. And Drew's really, Drew's wiry, strong, and he's capable of finishing at the basket well. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of who's the third score, who's the fourth score. Um, I, you know, Toloza's keep. I, I, you know, I'll be curious to see how their zone plays against Huerta, and will Toloza be kind of in his area? Will mm-hmm. he be in Huerta's? Headspace. Yeah. Because R- Rylan is as quick as Huerta is. <laughs> yeah. Rylan's quick as anybody. Yeah. Yeah. On the uh, on the girls' side for the Panthers, uh, a couple tough losses this week for Pioneer there, 5 and 12. Saturday lost uh, versus Tri County, uh, 50 to 33. And then Tuesday, McConaughey came in. They lose that one, 58 to 36. And the, th- the thing that I'm seeing with this team is. Two two and a half quarters of really good ball, but they just can't seem to get all four quarters together. Mm-hmm. They were down twenty four twenty, almost into the half against Tri County. Uh, miss a block out on a uh, on a free throw, ball goes out of bounds. Tri County gets it, hits a three, hits another two. Now all of a sudden it's a nine point game. They come out in the third quarter, and uh, Arvin um, Nozarsi I think got hot in that third quarter, and next thing you know they're they're down and they lose by seventeen, which doesn't look that bad now because mm-hmm. uh, they beat uh, Seeger mm-hmm. uh, on Thursday, uh, 63-33. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the same thing with McConaughey. They actually... Yeah, uh, Strike County beat Caston, too. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, same thing against McConaughey. And, you know, uh, Pioneer actually had the lead, I think, in the second quarter on a, a three by McKenna. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just uh, some turnovers and, uh, boy... Um, Miranda Stoll got hot in that third quarter. She mm-hmm. hit three threes in a row and and just kind of put that ball, you know, put it out of reach. And uh, Coach Davis, I mean, he just Stoll comes does, at you yeah. with. I think he played twelve girls. Right. The, fre- <laughs> the freshmen on that team are. You can tell how good they're going to be. Oh, yeah. Right now, they're just role players. Yeah. yeah. Kaiser, Kyle, Maben, the the youngest Maben. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can tell how good they're going to be. Yeah, I think there's a stole in there too. Another stole. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if she's a Avery, freshman or sophomore. Avery Stoll, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's crazy. There's a um, uh, well, there's one other one that I can't think of her name, but uh, um, yeah, I mean they're they're super talented in that freshman class. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you throw twelve girls 
at a at a team like that that can uh, that can come out and uh, thing is every one of them was hungry when they when they got on the floor so they wanted to uh, impress. Right, right. Uh, me and McKay, uh, McKenna Stricker had fourteen against Maconaqua. Me and me at ten. ten. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, good to see Mia scoring in double figures as well. Yeah, yeah. They've they've got to get you know 10 12 points out of Mia every night if mm-hmm. they if they want to have any kind of chance to compete um you know and then if you can get some points out of Lois Lair Hannah Ziegler big night she had six um mm-hmm. she came in and had back to back buckets in the uh, first quarter mm-hmm. kind of uh you know gave the uh, Panthers a little bit of a resurgence early as it looked like McConaughey was going to run away with it early mm-hmm. and, so, you know, Hannah's, Hannah's right. uh, you know, promising young player for them as well. Right, and, I mean, she might play a big role in it, you know, assuming that, again, the game against Argus actually happens. Mm-hmm. You know, again, Argus's bigs are kind of foul-prone, so if Hannah can get their bigs in foul, pro- foul trouble, yeah. I mean, that, that would be big. I mean, I, I, I hope, if, and if they can look for Hannah and she can uh, uh, get her offense going in the post, that's just going to make things easier for Stricker and McKegg. Yeah. Big big schedule coming up here. Obviously, the Saturday game at Argus. We don't know if that one will happen or not. Tuesday they go to Judson for a conference game. You know, North Judson. They still got a lot of conference to go. They, you know, they're they're so yeah. late on their conference and, part of their and, schedule. Yeah. One. Hopefully, they redraw kind of the conference schedule with in the Hoosier North. Yeah, you got Caston is done it's seven and zero. And North Judson only played two conference games. They're one and one. I mean, two and I, one now, I think. But right, yeah, at the time they were one and at one. At the time they were one and right. one. I mean that that can't happen. Yeah, and you got to have you got to have some kind of somebody needs to get into a room symmetry. and figure yeah. and figure it out here. Yeah, because yeah. that's it's not real. I mean, uh, again, I don't want to say it's unfair is not the correct word, but it's uh, it's not it's not. I don't think it's it's fun for the fans, and I don't think it's because again, Judson had their shot at casting, but. I, I don't think you want it. You want it to go down that way. Yeah, and it, it's kind of like uh, what they did a few years ago with the NFL, to where they make the last week conference. Yeah. To try and make that, you know, so make sure everybody's kind of finishing up at the same time. Yeah. So if there is a close race, then you know it, it kind of brings some some energy to the teams. Right. I mean, we've covered the TRC for a long, long time, and th- that would never happen in the mm-hmm. TRC. Right. So they go to Judson on Tuesday. They have uh, a road game on Thursday. They go to Peru, and then uh, and it's a Peru team that's won only uh, one game all yeah. year. Peru got their first win about a, what a week ago or a week or two ago against Logan Sport. A couple Sport. weeks ago, yeah, against yeah. Logan Sport. Was it after Christmas? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then a, a tough one to uh, to end up on uh, a week from tonight uh, at home versus West Central. It's a pretty good West Central team. Yeah, so four games in a week. Yeah. Yeah, if they play Argus. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, you know, obviously the weather's going to have a little factor in all this as it normally does this time of year. Mm -hmm. So let's take another break here. We'll uh, come back and finish up with uh, Valley and Winnemac when we get back here talking sports with Val. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible, should be customized to patient needs, should strive for better health outcomes, should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. 
Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. We're going to wrap things up here with Tippecanoe Valley and Winnemac in our final segment of the afternoon. For the uh, Valley boys, uh, Val, uh, eight and five had a uh, pair of home wins against a couple of Marshall County teams. Defeated Plymouth on Saturday, forty-five forty-four, and then knocked off the Laville Lancers on Tuesday, fifty-six forty-five. Then they will, uh, their next game, they'll be headed to Miami County to take on the McConaughey Braves. That'll be a good one. Yeah, I was at both of those games at home, beating Plymouth. Um, the Plymouth game, you know, Valley was up by eight at halftime and then became just a defensive struggle in the second half, and Plymouth just kept, kept chipping away. Um, you know, they play a switching man to man defense. Valley was struggling to hit from the outside. And it came down, uh, neither team scored in the final three minutes of the game. Really? Uh, a big three by Ian Cooksey to put him up 43-40 after Plymouth had tied it on their own three-pointer. And then, uh, you know, Cooksey had 13, Stephen Acasi had 13, and Riley Shepard had 12 in that game. And they were able to hang on against a pretty... You know, a guard-oriented Plymouth team, but a team that um, they got a six-five kid in Caden Ellery who can do a little bit of everything. I mean, he's he's six-five, he's, but he's not really a center. He's he's more like a wing, but he can hand, he can handle it well. He can rebound pretty well. He can shoot it pretty well. So they were able, to, you know, because of because of the way he played, they were able to get back and they got a junior guard in Preston Wolf who's mm-hmm. really come on. He is very quick. He's a good shooter too. Yeah, does kind of reminds me a little bit of what he does kind of for Plymouth what Caleb Stinson does for Caston. Mm-hmm. And they were able to get back into it, uh, but the three pointer by Cooksey was big. And then uh, you know last possession of the game, you know about nine seconds to go. Plymouth has the ball down by one, but boy Plymouth, uh, but I mean Valley's defense again they're just so big and Plymouth just can't. They couldn't see over the top. Wolf had to take kind of a flailing, kind of thirty footer at the buzzer that was, or with one second to go, that was an air ball, mm-hmm. and Valley was able to hold on. Then Valley beat Laville fifty six to forty five on Tuesday. Got some uh, got some highlights here, so we'll start that as you talk about that. Yeah, game. Uh, we're going to start right at the beginning of the game because I, I wrote about this extensively. <laughs> talk about setting a tone. Talking about talk about a play you're going to call uh, in the pregame locker room, and you're going to run it. Watch this dunk by <laughs> Akasi off a beautiful feed by Cooksey. And the thing is, Coach Edison had been, you saw him, he was kind of upset because he had been calling back screen, back screen, back screen, and they ran the back screen and they still couldn't stop it. Mm-hmm. What is Akasi? Uh, is he about 6'6 six, six now? Yeah, 6'6. Six, six. That was a that shot at the end of the first quarter. It was crazy. I mean, he's, he grew, what was he last year? 6'3, six, 6'4? Six, I think he was 6'4. Six, Six four six five, yeah, yeah. So. And, and, and again, they run a nice high low play. That was nice, nice ball. But again, um, again, Valley. Again, the whole with with them, it's you know the Shepherd and Cooksey's ability to shoot, combined with Akasi and Kyler Johnson's ability on the inside. Kyler had a very good game. I'm not sure my article can can conveyed how good he was. Uh, that was he a had, tough left handed shot there by Akasi. Right. And this one's even more impressive. Shepard misses the shot. Steven gets the rebound. He tips it. And then spin move. Pump fake. He <laughs> scores and he's fouled. And there. Kind of a little bit of emotion from Steven. He's kind of, yeah. Oof, yeah. He was like, he was pumped up. You could tell. And he made the free throw. That put him up by nine. Big bucket by Steven at the end of the third quarter. Rebounding an air ball and putting it back up and in. Valley went up by eight. That was a lob. Well, that's what, that's <laughs> I'm sure what that's what they tell you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, Valley pulling away. Laville was a little bit turnover prone. Michael Good was outstanding in this game. I mean, he's, he had 18, and that was battling with Steven much of the night, but Valley able to run out the clock and win by 11 at 56-45. Uh, Laville committed 15 fouls in the fourth quarter, and no, I did not misspeak. He, 
15 fouls in the fourth quarter, and Valley attempted 23 free throws. Wow. So Val- LaVille was playing the foul game pretty early on, and Valley only made 13 of the 23, mm-hmm. uh, but able to hang on. Nakasi had 20, and Cooksey had 12. Steven also had 10 rebounds to go with his 20 points. Yeah, nice little double double. If you read my article, I, that offensive rebound, the double pump, I, it was it was interesting. I, I put the full quote. I didn't edit it. Just everything that was going through Steven's mind, because he's thinking, okay, I get the rebound. I know I'm going to go back up. I know I'm going quickly, but I know my pump fake's going to work because I just know that they're going to bite on the pump fake because they know how quickly I'm going. Mm-hmm. And so the pump fake works. They get him off. He gets him off his feet, banks it in. And so it was, it's interesting to hear how a basketball player thinks in that moment. Yeah. And Steven is very thoughtful about the game. And that was I, I was so glad I, I asked him about that. Two, two things in that that, that I'm really impressed with mm-hmm. because you don't see them very much anymore. A, the, the pump fake. Mm-hmm. And B, he used the glass. Yeah, I mean those. You know that's that's old school basketball there. And, yeah, you know it it works. Yeah, <laughs> it works. Mm-hmm. And Stephen talked about he played on a travel team out of Fort Wayne over the summer. and said worked a lot on his ball on his ball handling and his shooting. He goes, he goes. Now I'm confident if you pass the ball out to me at 15 feet, I'm going to make that shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, it's his ball handling that you can just. You, again, it's it's not necessarily you have to handle the ball like Magic Johnson. It's just. Being able to put a put the ball on the floor a couple times to get from point A to point B, yeah, yeah. and sometimes that's that's just important. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's the same thing with that fifteen foot shot. It's not something that you're going to look for, but if you got an open look at it, you got to take it. Yeah, I mean that goes back to like Mark Jackson. You know when you know the Pacers when mm-hmm. you know if you're standing there wide open and you don't shoot it, what's what's the point of being out there? Right. Now, I want to give a shout out to Ian Cooksey for his defense too on Zarnecki. Colin Zarnecki averaged just 16 a game, and Valley held him to eight. Mm-hmm. And that was Ian Cooksey, and that was DeAndre Hamilton, kind of teaming up. He, again, Ian had to get some breathers in that game because Laville sets a ton of screens. Yeah, big big game coming up at McConaughey. Obviously, Josiah Ball oh, and uh, Stephen Akasi. That'll be that a, is going to be wow. That is going to be yeah. something. But in a lot of ways, the key is going to be can Valley's guards slow down Fuddy Kyle and AJ Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can can Cooksey and, and Cowan Davis Cowan was excellent in the second half nine points and he's I mean Davis is like a 90% free throw shooter as well so mm-hmm. I mean with the way he handles it and he, his shot he's got a pretty shot he just doesn't take it very often mm-hmm. but he's got a nice looking shot as well so can they can Valley's guards slow down McConaughey's guards and can they protect the ball to keep to, to keep it from becoming a track not that necessarily Valley wants to slow the game down but they don't they don't want to give Valley or McConaughey fast break easy layups at the hoop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's McConaughey's game. They yeah. want to go a thousand miles an hour. Right. Yeah. And Josiah Ball is averaging what thirty a game. I mean, he is. Mm. You know, he's special. Yeah, he, he is. Yeah, <laughs> he uh, is. That, that's good. that should be a fun one. That mm-hmm. should be a really fun one there Saturday. Hopefully, they get to get that one in. Uh, on the girls' side, uh, still fourteen and three because they did not play last week and and they only have one game this week as they host. Fort Wayne Northrop, uh, twelve and four coming in uh, Saturday night. Yeah, just a weird schedule. Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon yeah. at two thirty. I, I hope to be at that one. Um, Fort Wayne Northrop is one of the best teams in Fort Wayne. Maybe the best team. I know. Uh, if you're a Snyder fan, you're probably or a Homestead fan, you probably have, would like to have a say about that. But yeah. this is a, Nor- a Northrop team that blew out Valley. It beat them by th- I think thirty five at last year's tournament, which was at Trine on a neutral court. Now they play at Valley. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how this one goes. Uh, Gabby Gonzalez is back. That's good. Mm-hmm. And so with her and Chesney Miller on top, they're they're going to be bothersome. You know, we'll see how bothersome they can be to Fort Wayne Northrop's guards. Um, you know, again. Um, Macy Peterson's out for the year, but Lucy Hayden's really stepped up and done a nice job. So, yeah, yeah. again, we'll see how they do, but then another week off before they go to Kokomo. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a, a slow stretch in their schedule. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to Winnemac. The boys 5-7, and seven, but 0-4 uh, oh in the conference. They split a pair of games, uh, but they lost the conference game at home to Knox on Friday 40-45. to 45. And then uh, they won on Tuesday against Northfield non-conference game, forty-five thirty-three. Yeah, um, this team's figured some things out defensively, I think. Yeah. Um, John Malco had fourteen in the win over Northfield, and then Brendan Hines had eleven. I think, and if you can get Brendan in double figures, I think that's going to really help because mm. um, I was kind of wondering if they were helping off Brendan and maybe spending extra time guarding the Malco brothers and um, Bentel. Um, so again, that, that's a good sign that Brendan's getting hot, and I think they're playing better defense. Uh, this 
again, it's it's it, they've had some head scratchers of games. That, again, because you, you, the way they started off against Twin Lakes and North Newton, they boy, it's like this team's going to be special. And they didn't kind of laid an egg against Rochester. They just bounced back up and down. But mm-hmm. uh, there's there's a long way to go in this season. Yeah. Uh, Big big one tonight if they play um, North Judson coming in. Mm-hmm. Obviously the Blue Jays eight and two, but they're one and one in the conference, so they need to win to uh, to you know keep their conference hopes alive. Right, and that when you play North Judson, the first two names that come to mind are Josiah McDaniel's and uh, Bales mm-hmm. Quinn Quinn Bales because mm-hmm. Bales he's he's a kid who can do a little bit of everything. He's what six? He's a legit six four. Mm-hmm. I mean, seeing him in person, I was like, he's grown, mm-hmm. and he is—he's just so tough to stop. Because, so how do you match up against him? I think that's what Coach Springer is kind of thinking uh, as they pre- as he prepares for this game. Yeah, yeah, not a lot of height on that Winnemac squad, right? Yeah, and then a uh, home game Saturday uh, versus OD, who's two and eight. So I mean, OD's struggling a little bit. A future conference rival, OD's. Yeah, yeah uh, OD's getting a little better. Um, they've got some height. Uh, but again, it's kind of a mostly a guard oriented team, though. Yeah, yeah. And then a f- almost a full week to prepare until next Friday when Ka- when uh, Caston comes to town, and Caston has just given fits, given Winnemac fits over the past few years. Yeah. Uh, on the girls' side, um, boy, a pair of conference losses for the Lady Warriors as they lost Friday to Knox, forty eight uh, fifty eight, and that was Knox coming off of a. Terrible loss the night before yeah. at Tippecanoe Valley, right. and then uh, they lose Tuesday at Triton twenty five thirty five. So, um, you know, now they're sitting at two and three in the conference. I think that was kind of we thought that Winnemac might be right there below Caston, mm-hmm. but all of a sudden it's uh, it's a two and three record. Yeah, uh, against Knox, you know, Portland Minix got red hot. She scored twenty six and she just hit a bunch of free throws. Uh, and then in the Triton game, I think the problem was foul trouble. Uh, Maggie Smith got in quick foul trouble. She didn't. She had to sit out the entire second quarter. And then Candace Croft also got in foul trouble. Um, again, Winnemac was right in that Triton game. They were down 24-23 after the third quarter. Mm-hmm. But only scored two points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Marissa Iverson was great in that game. She had 12, but needed a little bit more help. Yeah, the rest of the team only had 13. Right, I, I mean, think, right. only scoring 25, that's... It's not going to win you many games. Right, Croft, I think, he had six. But Popejoy was held to two, and Smith uh, wasn't a factor offensively either. Yeah. The thing, and what was frustrating, they held Addison Beers to 12, but Faulkner had 11, and, it, you know, she's kind of their X factor, I think, for Triton, mm-hmm. and she kind of outplayed Winamax guards in that game. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tough week for uh, the Warriors as well as they head to Glenn on Saturday. They have Plymouth coming right. in on Tuesday, and then they host Judson next Thursday. So I mean, that's a that's a pretty hefty schedule over the next uh, six days. Right. I mean, Glenn play is pretty slow, so we'll see if Winnemac tries to speed them up, and maybe I'll be curious to see what Coach Stasiak's defensive game plan is going into that game because I don't think John Glenn wants to play very fast. So will he try to speed up the tempo a little bit? Um, but of course, if um, but again, I think the key is staying out of foul trouble. Uh, but you know, Iverson ha- has been playing great. I mean, she's been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Plymouth game, Plymouth's another guard-oriented team, mm-hmm. uh, so you have to you have to stop their dribble penetration, mm-hmm. um, and then you have to find a way to stop Lena Jones, who does a Le- little bit of everything. Lena Jones coming off of a triple double the other yeah, night. Yeah, so that matchup with Croft and Lena Jones. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how much time they'll be spending head to head on each other. But that's kind of an interesting. Their skill sets are kind of similar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then Judson, uh, again, I, I like that freshman Kaylee Tunis. Mm-hmm. She's she's gonna be a good one. And then you know Hensley's that streak shooter who can hit three or four in a row. Yeah, and they got some size inside. Not real hot, real tall, but uh, you know they got some some pretty good sized girls that. You know, we're able to pull down some rebounds. Yeah, I like Judson's fr- just their freshman class in general. Uh, mm-hmm. the Johnston is that the the other freshman who's good for them. So, uh, yeah, that'll be a, it'll be a good, it should be a good game. It should be down to the wire game when they play Judson. Yeah, that'll be an interesting week here for uh, for Winnemac. You know, and obviously just the one conference game. But if they can get that win in the conference and and even the record at three and three, that would be big mm-hmm. uh, against a uh, obviously a big rival in North Judson. Right, and then you know, uh, Winnemac still uh, 
you know, last week of the season, Pioneer and Twin Lakes, which will get them prepared for when they go to North Miami for the sectional. Yep. So, all right. Um, yeah, the only other thing I was going to talk about, the uh, sectional draw a week from this Sunday for the girls. Yeah. So we're going to be uh, finding out uh, who, our, uh, who our teams are all going to be playing against in the uh, sectional. That's going to be happening, uh, I think, what, January 30th, I think. Right, that's the when sectional, sectional start, week. yeah. Yeah. Hard to believe we're almost there already. Yeah. We should we should also mention the IHSAA had an executive committee meeting yesterday, Thursday the 11th. Okay. Obviously, we'll see. We don't know what they talked about. Well, we imagine they're starting to exchange enrollment figures. Mm-hmm. And we think something might come out from that pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, they go by the... We know that the Indiana Department of Education has released their enrollment figures. The IHSAA uses the Indiana... Department of Education's figures to determine their class figures. Yeah. So this, obviously, every other year, this is a big deal. But this time, it's a really, really big deal right. because of the 2025-2530 plan. Right. Obviously, we'll find out sectional alignments right around May 1st every year. Yeah. But they, the way the IHSA does it, they kind of trickle out the information. Like, mm-hmm. okay, these will here are your enrollment figures. And then they'll come out and they'll say, it's like here, a little teaser. Yeah. <laughs> here's who's in what class for each sport. Yeah. And then they'll come out with the sectionals. Right, right. But again, I'm very curious to see what 1A is going to look like right. with the 30%. Right. Because we have covered Caston for decades, and they have always been in a sectional with the White County schools and with South Newton. Mm-hmm. This has got to stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is so frustrating. And it finally might stop. Yeah. Because you finally might have a six or seven team sectional where Caston won't have to travel that far. No, they'll go to Adam Central. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> they'll they'll figure something out. Right. But uh yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Obviously, you know, when when they move up to that thirty percent mark for for one A, I mean you're gonna add probably what, five percent? You're adding twenty teams. Right, 5% of which is 20 t- schools into 1A. Mm-hmm. So you're sprinkling 20 schools over 16 sectionals. Right. So you're basically adding almost a another team in each sectional. Right. Of some of which may already have eight. Mm-hmm. So. So every, you would imagine every sectional is going to have at least seven. Mm-hmm. And some might have eight. Yeah. In 1A. For in sure. In 1A. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And then you take, you know, like 36, uh, which is a five-team two-way sectional right now, but chances are North Miami and Pioneer are both going to be in 1A. So how does right. that get reached? But chances are the Rochester's going to be in 2A. Right. So would they go back to 36 with mm-hmm. 36? I mean, obviously 36 is still going to be one of the sectionals, but it's going to look completely different. It's going to, yeah. 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 Because there's just going to be a, a whole different dynamic, obviously. So, right. Yeah, we're we're anticipating North Miami and, and Pioneer will be back in one A. We're anticipating that Rochester will be back in two A. Uh, we don't think that Valley will drop to two A, do we? Nope. We think Valley's going to stay in three A. That's yeah. kind of our prediction. Yeah. So, and obviously our one A schools are mm-hmm. currently going to stay in one A. Right. We also think Winnemac football will drop to one A. Yeah. Again. Okay. But we think they'll stay in two A in the rest. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, and we well, think we think North Judson might drop to one A for basketball. Hint, hint. Hmm. Do so you think they may drop down too? We think they might drop down one. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be they're gonna be very close to the line. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, anything else, real quick? That's all I got. All right. Well, uh, if the weather holds out, we'll have uh, Rochester at Lewis Cast coming up next. If not, we'll throw something else on for you on Channel Four. But. Uh, Hope everybody stays safe in this weather. And oh, uh, congrats to Riley Shepard from Valley Basketball going to Huntington U. Yes, yes. So uh, yeah, I know that's that's well well deserved. I know he's been fighting some injuries, but uh, well, he's he puts in the time. Yeah, he yeah, puts in the time absolutely. for sure. So congratulations, Riley. All right, that'll do it for today. Thanks for tuning in and uh, joining us here on Talking Sports. We'll be back next week. To talk some more sports with Val. Thanks. Thank you.